Uh, moving, moving on, on to, to the, the next question. question. All right. So the next question asks us to find the maximum volume of a rectangular box inscribed in a sphere with radius r. So what I mean is for a rectangular box to be inscribed in a sphere, if I were to draw out the 2D representation of this, so let's say that our sphere has a radius r like this, okay? The, the rectangle is inscribed in a circle is as if the rectangle is touching each of the, the vertices of the rectangle are touching the circle. That's what I mean by the rectangle is inscribed within the circle. Okay, so it kind of looks like this, but in the 3D representation. Okay, uh, so we have to find the maximum volume of the rectangular box. So the, the strategy involved here is to basically find the volume of the rectangle in terms of the radius and also of the dimensions of the rectangle and then finding its derivative and when we find the derivative of this rectangle we're able to find the dimensions of the rectangle that maximize the volume of this rectangular box and then plugging it back in we're able to find the volume okay so that's what we're going to do and this this technique is called what we call optimization okay so the first thing to know is that, uh, looking at our 2D diagram here, that the radius of the box, or the radius of the circle, or the diameter of the circle, actually, I should say, is also the diameter of the rectangle, if it's inscribed in the circle, or the sphere. Okay, so let me draw out the diameter. Sorry for this really crude drawing. It's cut. Um, maybe I should use the line. I'll just draw. Okay. Um, so... The diameter, okay, let's try this again. The diameter of our rectangle is the same as the diameter of our sphere, okay? So the diameter of the sphere is equal to the diameter of the rectangle, okay? And given our uh, handy formula, the diameter of a rectangle, so the dr, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, where x, y, and z are the dimensions of the rectangle. Or a rectangular box, I should say. Okay, so equating this to the diameter of a sphere, we see here that the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 2r, or the diameter of a sphere. Okay, so, so if we square, square both sides, we get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 4r squared. Now we're going to uh, obtain the volume of a rectangular box, which is going to be x times y times z. And um, if we write the this expression in terms of z, we get z is equal to the square root of 4r squared minus x squared minus y squared. So now, now we're going to plug this into our volume equation, and we'll get the volume of the rectangular box in terms of x, y, and the radius of the circle is x, y times the square root of 4r squared minus x squared minus y squared. Okay? So does that make sense so far, I guess? So now that we have a volume uh, formula in terms of x, y, and the radius, we're going to calculate the partial derivatives of uh of our equation here okay so by finding the partial derivatives of our derivative okay our partial derivative of our functions here we're able to basically find the critical points of each of our partial derivatives and equate them each other into a system of equations and by equating them to a system of equations, we're able to find the values of x and y that satisfies both equations. And if we are able to do that, then we're able to find the dimensions of x and y that um, directly and uh, that that maximize the volume of a rectangular box. Okay, so I'll bring us through it slowly. So when we're calculating partial derivatives, we're going to derive in terms of only one variable, and we're going to keep the other variable constant. Okay, so what that means is that if we're partially deriving in terms of x, for example, then all the y variables are held as constants, okay? So now we're going to derive this function in terms of x. So I see here that this is a product uh, rule of differentiation. So I'm going to derive our first 
a function x. So it's going to be y times 4r squared minus x squared minus y squared. Okay. And I'm going to derive the second function, which is y times 4r squared minus x squared minus y squared, which is going to be equal minus x squared y. Yeah. Divided by root of 4r squared minus x squared minus y squared. And that's equal to y times 4r squared minus 2x squared minus y squared divided by the root of 4r squared minus x squared minus y squared. So this is the partial derivative in terms of x of our function. And if I were to do the same for our y, we got the partial derivative in, of y to be x times 4r squared minus 2y squared minus x squared divided by the root of 4r squared minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, so you guys can pause the video and you guys can calculate the partial derivative, is, but it's basically the same thing as calculating the partial derivative of x. Instead, you're holding x to be constant and you're deriving in terms of y. Um, and you're using the chain rule for the second function and you're using the product rule of differentiation for the entire function. Okay, so now that we have found our partial derivatives, we're going to set both of these equal to zero. So if you set v of x to be equal to zero, we are going to find the values of x and y that satisfy our vx equal to zero. Okay, but since it's a rational expression, we, all we need to do is examine the um, the numerate the expression in the numerator because the expression in the numerator dictates whether when our function is equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to examine y times four r squared minus two x squared minus y squared is equal to zero, and the same thing for partial v of y or partial y of v. We're going to examine just the numerator, which is x times four r squared minus two y squared minus x squared equal to zero. And then we're going to equate these in a system of equations and solve for the variables that satisfy both of these equations. Okay, so looking here, we can cancel out y in our partial derivative of x and a cancel x in our partial derivative of y by dividing both sides by x and y. Okay, by doing so, we get this system of equations, 4r squared minus 2x squared minus y squared and 4r squared minus 2y squared minus x squared equals 0 equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to use the process of elimination instead of substitution to calculate or to um, comp computate or compute the uh, system of linear equations here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 2. So if I multiply equation 1 by 2, we get 8r squared minus 4x squared minus 2y squared equals 0, and this is 3. And now I'm going to do 3 minus 2 here. So if 3 is minus 2 here, we get r, 4r squared minus 2y squared minus x squared. And 0, 0. And if I subtract this, what we get, we get 4r squared uh, minus 3x squared. Right? Yep. And we also get uh, y squared 2y squared plus 2y minus 2y squared plus 2y squared is equal to 0 is equal to 0. Okay. <clears throat> and now we have here that we can solve for x in terms of r, right? So x is going to equal 2r divided by root 3. Okay. So now we have found the value of x that satisfies these equations. And now we're going to plug x back into one of our equations here to solve for y. So we're going to plug x back into 3. And if we plug x into, let's not do it into 3, let's do it into 1. We get 4r squared minus 2 times 2r divided by root 3 squared minus y squared equals 0. We get that y is equal to 2r root 3. Okay. <laughs> So now that we have x and y, right, we can now find z. So if we, f we plug back in x and y into our z function here, 
we get that z is equal to, so z is equal to the root of, whoops, the root of 4r squared minus x squared minus y squared, right? So you plug x and y back into here, we get 4r squared minus 4r3 squared uh, minus 4r squared 3. And if we calculate this, we get um, Twelve eight four. We get the root of four r squared three, or two r root three. Okay, so z, x, and y are all equal to two r root three. So therefore, the volume that is maximized by these dimensions is going to be equal to uh, volume is equal to x times y times z, which is equal to two r root three cubed, and that's equal to eight r cubed. 3 oh, times divided by 3 times root 3. Okay, so in, in conclusion, we first derived in a, a, a formula for the volume of our rectangle inscribed within our sphere uh, by first figuring out that the diameter of a rectangle is the same as the diameter of a sphere. By doing that, we're able to express the uh, z dimension of our rectangle as in terms of the radius and x and y and by doing so we're able to find a formula for the volume in terms of x and y only after that we found the partial derivatives of uh of the of this formula here or this function and then we we calculated the critical points for each of these uh, partial derivatives so these critical points to point to the fact that we want to optimize our rectangle to have the maximum volume within our sphere so when we set our derivative to be equal to zero for both partial derivatives, we are saying that we want to find the values of x and y that will, the dimensions of x and y that will maximize our volume. So once we find our partial derivatives, we made it into a system of equations to find the values of x and y that satisfy both uh, partial derivatives. And by doing so, uh, we're able to calculate the dimensions of x, y, and z. And it turns out that the dimensions that maximize uh, the volume of a rectangular box within a sphere that is a cube with the dimensions 2r divided by root 3. Okay, so other than that, the solution is correct and we can move on.